We're here in Puglia in southern Italy to look at first fix Italian electrical installations and how they compare with what we're typically seeing in the UK. There's some things in this video that will blow your mind, particularly if you're from the UK or the US because the way they do things here is completely different to what we're used to seeing. This property is also interesting because it's very nature. Around in this region, properties are built in this very interesting style for old buildings. And this is a combination of old and new. So let's dive in and go and see what's been happening. There's one thing we know about Italian electrical installations. It's common with a lot of countries in Europe. They have an absolute fetish when it comes to flexible conduit. This stuff is absolutely everywhere. And in each room, you'll find one of these boxes as well. Now on this project, we've got black, we've got white, we've got brown, we've got purple, we've got green flexible conduits. As we go around, we're gonna try and figure out exactly what the combination means. So stick around to the end of the video and we'll reveal what the color code is. So before we delve into the depths of the electrical system in the house, we're here at the origin of the supply. Most properties in Italy are on the TT earthing system, or actually the earthing system isn't provided by the distribution network you have to sort your own that means earth rods and we'll come back to that a little bit later uh, here I've got the meter box uh, which is just a meter box with this size meter I don't think you're going to fit anything else in there bar the electricity meter uh, this is a temporary one just while they're constructing uh, the project eventually this has to go down near the road so someone can read the meter which is obviously strange because there's smart meters uh, in there I think someone's lost the key for this one as well so they've had to uh, prise it open uh, to see what's going on uh, the builders put in a temporary supply uh, and this is their temporary supply, but look at this. This is a substantial bit of kit. Looks like it's uh, just designed for the job to keep the builders going on. Uh, it does fall down a little bit when you go from here as the cable drapes us across and is wrapped around the tree. But again, that's temporary supplies for you. So I'm here at what will be the beating heart of the electrical system uh, where the distribution board is going to go. As UK viewers would call it the consumer unit. Again, a different approach here. This back plate is fixed in at the first fix stage. So you don't have to decide who the manufacturer of the circuit breakers, etc., uh, is going to be. That's decided during the second fix phase. Uh, one thing you will notice is this is enormous when you compare it to what we fit typically uh, in a UK home, which I think is great because it allows for loads of future expansion and changes. A few reasons why it is uh, slightly larger because we are on a TT system, um, all of the circuit breakers in there will be double pole for one. And they also don't get so hung up about having an individual RCBO or earth leakage protection dedicated to each circuit. They still very much use the split load approach here. Um, this will be a three phase system as well. So the circuits will be split among the three phases as well. So if you lose one to an earth fault, you're not going to lose uh, all of the power in the property. Um, following a similar pattern to what we saw in a video we made in Tenerife, the distribution board is here directly underneath it is the first of many uh, junction boxes or cassettes I've just I think been heard it being described as um, where you actually do the interconnecting wiring between uh, the different circuits and, and sort, of, sort out the switching arrangements in there you don't do that uh, in the distribution board so when we come back to have a look at this when it's finished we're expecting to see clean and pristine uh, layout in there so I'm studying what is going to be a shower room and a quirk of the Italian electrical system in a bathroom you have to have or we believe you have to have an emergency pull cord that's going to be installed up there so if you get into trouble in the shower pull the cord and someone will come to your help when they hear the alarm now what we've learned is the alarm only goes off in a house so if you're on your own you could be there for some time and of course because we're in Europe we're actually allowed to have sockets in the bathroom and we assume they're going to go there where these black conduits are coming through the wall there so you can plug in your hairdryer and other appliances yeah pretty useful we should adopt that perhaps in the UK another mandatory requirement here in Italy is the need for emergency lighting which again is a pretty useful function there's a lot of power cuts in this region because there's a lot of electrical storms so that security of the emergency light I think is again something we should look at adopting on a more widespread basis one thing you won't need as an electrician in Italy very often actually is your ladders because most of the electrical installation during first fix takes place in the floor Beneath this screed here, we've got all of the conduits running the distribution across the entire property, along with the plumber's pipe work. So we've still got that battle to go on about who gets there first and who gets the prime location. But you only really need ladders for things that are going up high in this type of property, which is usually light fittings. 
and that's about it. Speaking of coordination between different trades across this site, it seems everybody's getting on and everybody's helping each other out. However, it looks here, some things are universal. The plasterer seems must have had an off day and has decided just to fill the boxes in a little bit too much, where most of the other ones on the site seem reasonably clean. So when it comes to fitting back boxes, there seems to be a universal back box being used across this property. Uh, one that works with both plastered walls and plasterboard walls. We see three in a row here, so I believe there's a thermostat going there, the light switch is there, and a power outlet for the socket here. Across the room here, we're set up for bedside lights, again, light switches and power. But again, with all this coordination going on in the floor, you've got to be pretty sure at first fix that you get all of this stuff in the right place. Because this property has a TT installation, you have to provide a means of connection to earth. You're not relying upon anything provided by the distribution network operator. And I can best describe this as substantial. In the UK, we're used to a sort of yeah, a small earth rod that with a bit of luck, we could drive into the ground and pray that we get a suitable low resistance depending on ground conditions. We're not taking any risks here. This is a ring earth electrode that goes around the whole property with this exposed copper wire, and then it's further tied in at regular intervals with this very substantial galvanized steel uh, earth rod there that's driven in, and then also will be connected to structural steel within the foundation set up where that is uh, used within the construction. After an agreeable lunch, we met up with the project architect and the electrician responsible for the project. When you take a conduit up a wall, yep. does it always have to go in straight. So in, in the UK we can only go straight or we can go horizontal. We can't do we can't put anything on a diagonal. So I've just learned from our Italian electrician friend there, uh, we're talking about safe zones and where you can and can't run conduit up a wall. Um, and it's pretty similar to the UK with respect to that. We have a, a safe zone that comes up the wall to the boxes. Uh, and you could also wire horizontally between the boxes. So I could take a pipe from here across to this box here, and then I guess back down again. We're not doing any rings here, of course. Um, when it comes to the under the floor system, now remember this conduit here is buried deep under the screed, so it can basically take the quickest route possible. So there's no boxes in between uh, this end and where it goes to at the distribution board, which of course is, is natural. You don't want tight bends and corners when it comes to pulling cables into flexible conduit. So what I've also just learned is Italian electricians won't waste time doing things you don't have to do. If the light fitting here is going to be double insulated, you know, the, the square symbol we're used to seeing on so many products, they won't run a CPC or earth wire to the fitting itself. And, and why would you? Because it doesn't need one. Okay, so I'm here on the roof with uh, Nicola Azetta, who is the project architect for this project and who's also been my uh, translator when it comes to speaking to uh, the local craftsmen as well. So Nicola, one thing we're not short of down here in Puglia is sunshine. Yes. Um, and this property is going to have a solar installation as well? Yes, of course. Uh, a solar installation of 15 panels, five kilowatt of power, and they will be put uh, flat on the roof. And is that normal in Italy? You have to have in solar panels? In Italy, it's, uh, uh, it's mandatory to have solar panel in the new construction of buildings. A recent law of uh, last year increased the power uh, you need to install on, on your building uh, to uh, one fifth of the, of, of the surface uh, covered by the building uh, in power. So, for example, if you have a house of 100 uh, uh, square meter, you need at least five kilowatt uh, of, of power uh, for, uh, for your house. So also the heating for this property is going to be air source. Yes. Is that also pretty typical now in Italy? Yes, it's quite diffuse uh, to have a heat pump in Italy, especially uh, now with this public rent that there was to, to restore existing buildings. So obviously in here in the south of Italy, we're not so worried about heating. No, exactly. It's mainly about cooling. Exactly. And there isn't really an alternative option to a heat pump. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, and obviously that ties in well with the solar. Yeah, of course, of course, because uh, the, the heat pump works with electricity, so... Yeah, so it works at the same time. Yeah, exactly. So, so less reliance on the... In, in the UK, we have the opposite problem. We've got... Uh, we tend to use heating for heating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. And then we need that at night when obviously yeah, sure. there's not much sun, even if we had much sun in the UK, actually. <laughs> so Nicola, on this project, yeah. it's uh, quite a complex project because yeah. we have rainwater harvesting, yes. solar panels, we've got the heat pumps, 
the home automation, is that left to the electrician or does somebody else design it on their behalf? No, we, we put together a team. I am the architect and we are our studio, Race Architectura, we are in charge uh, of the architectural design. And we had some consultant of ours that took care of the design of the uh, MEP, you know, part of the house. Now, when it comes to the electrical supply, we can see it hanging behind us in, in the, in the yeah. distance. In Italy, you pay per the kilowatt, because in, in the UK, we have enormous power supplies. We could, okay. uh, a standard house supply could be 23 kilowatts. Okay, really? Yeah, but I think it's slightly different here in yeah. Italy. No, it's different. Let's say the, the standard uh, for years has been three kilowatt. Now we are starting to need more power. So you switch to six and 20 and you arrive until uh, uh, I think uh, uh, six is uh, monophase, but from above six is three phase. For example, this house, I think we will have a 20, 20 kilowatt connection. Yeah. Three phase uh, because, uh, you know, with, uh, with heat pump and appliances uh, and, uh, and pumps and, uh, and uh, induction. So a standard Italian home, six kilowatt single phase is the yeah. standard power supply. Yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. And does that cause problems? It happens uh, that, uh, you know, maybe you, you put on the, the laundry together with the oven and, uh, you know, yeah. the, the board uh, switch. Yeah, it that, trips. That, yes, but that's... Uh, yeah, no, in Italy uh, it's like that, uh, yeah, probably because the, the uh, electricity is, uh, is, is, it was not so cheap, I don't know, so, or, they're not be, or arrived later than the UK, I don't know, so it's always been like that. Yeah. It's, it's improving in the, late, in the latest 20 years more, you yeah. the more power. So people get used to switching things back on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we finally learned the colour coding behind the flexible conduits from our friend the electrician who we met earlier and it's simpler than we thought. It is black for power or the low voltage supplies for essentially mains power for sockets and lights and extra low voltage is in the white conduit. So that's things for the home automation system, telephone, CCTV and it makes sense here. We're in the TV area so there will be an internet connection, there will be possibly a telephone point or the TV aerial connection if we're still on that, uh, on that old uh, aerial system. Other parts of the property you could see cables hanging out where there's going to be CCTV cameras. But what about those other colours? Well, the purple and the green and the brown, that was the builder helping out. Sometimes electricians, you can't be on site and you need to ask the builder to do you a favour. And that's what they've done here in a few areas where they're about to lay cement and concrete. Uh, they basically put in what they had in the van. Well, for me, this has been an absolutely fascinating tour of the first fix electrical installation that we see here in Italy. Depending upon when you're watching this video you can check out what the project looks like when it's finished by watching this video here if you're early doors to it check out what we found in Tenerife